What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're doing a follow-up deep dive on Tesla's acquisition of Maxwell Technologies. I put out a video the day this deal was announced, doing my best to analyze it. Since then, I've been reading all up on Maxwell Technologies, what they were developing that Tesla's interested in, uh, a couple amazing YouTube videos from Sean Mitchell, one of my favorite Tesla tubers. I'll put a link in the description, as well as Jack Ricard, who's got an EV TV channel um, on YouTube. They both put out amazing research um, on this acquisition that I re well, I'm going to keep referencing throughout this video. So definitely check their stuff out. So let's get into it. So Maxwell Technologies, this, this San Diego-based ultra capacitor company, why did Tesla acquire them? What is the biggest reason? I have boiled this down to synthesizing, and I mentioned this in my last video, the dry battery electrode technology. So this is a breakthrough new technology. Even though it's a very old company. Uh, in late 2016, they were, I, or I think that's when the first they first publicly mentioned this, they started developing this dry battery electrode technology, which is based on their intellectual property around around their supercapacitor and ultracapacitor business, they've now developed and spun that in a way to, de de uh, to develop dry battery electrodes. Why are these dry battery electrodes such a big deal? What is the importance of it? Essentially, a dry battery electrode is mainly a huge breakthrough in the manufacturing and assembly process of batteries, which is exactly what Tesla is super interested in. That is basically Tesla's core competency as a company is assembling battery packs. That is why they're building the world's largest battery factory in the world, the Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada. So Tesla, if you could prove a cost advantage in the manufacturing of batteries, then Tesla is going to be the first person that is going to want to purchase that because they are building more batteries than anyone and can, you know, economically return on that investment faster than anyone else because they have such a huge manufacturing operation. So what is the key breakthrough here? So I am totally, I've done my best to try and understand this, but I'm not a battery expert. So please take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But my understanding is the dry electrode um, differs from the wet electrode, which is the state of the art, which is what's in Tesla's, which is what's in every EV right now. Essentially, a wet electrode goes through this process of this sol toxic solvent coating that is applied to the outside of the electrode. And this coating process, this solvent coating um, has to dry. And it's a very intensive process to be able to accurately dry the coating. You have to literally physically roll it out. And there's these massive solvent drying ovens. So I don't know if this is happening at Tesla's Gigafactory right now, but this removal of the drying solvent process and just of the solvent in general is where that huge cost advantage comes in because you can if you imagine if you don't have to set up this massive facility to dry your solvent then a you don't need that space so you're saving a ton of space and you're saving a ton of time and space and time in your from a manufacturing operation are money and so that is direct so from a super simple like like it, it took me a while to figure this out but the, the actual breakthrough i mean the technology is incredibly complicated but the actual breakthrough is kind of simple to understand which is when they're building Building these batteries, um, they don't have to roll them out and wait for them to dry with a toxic solvent. So they're saving time and they're not using the toxic solvent. They uh, estimate this uh, could be a 10 to 20% reduction versus the state of the art wet electrode. So that is a pretty material difference in terms of the cost. And on one of the conference calls, which is in Sean Mitchell's video, there's a snippet from someone with Maxwell Technologies saying, we just validated with our big auto OEM partner, who I'm guessing was Tesla, that this DBE technology technology can significantly improve costs and really make a cheap electric vehicles feasible. The cost of assembling the battery, that's a huge component. And so if you can decrease that cost, you know, you'll make electric vehicles go mainstream. And the CFO says this number of $100 per kilowatt hour is like the number to beat. And that is what they were gunning for with this DBE technology. And they don't specify that they hit that number, but they do imply that they made really good progress towards getting there. So on one end, um, we have this, this fascinating reduction in cost um, of the battery manufacturing process. So I think this alone could be justify the entire reason for Tesla to purchase Maxwell Technologies. If they can reduce their cost to manufacture batteries, even by five or 10%, that is a huge advantage for the company. But the other good thing about this technology, the dry battery electrode, not having the solvent in there and not waiting it for to, to, to dry is essentially a simpler manufacturing process. Actually, I'm going to take a quote from Jack Ricard's video. Also, he kind of makes fun of me and his video because some of my earlier claims are wrong, but I, so sh I loved it though. So shout out Jack Ricard. He comments on hyperchange. I hope he's watching. Your videos are awesome. So thank you for doing it. But he has this quote that says, um, basically what this, this results to is a much simpler, much less expensive, smaller footprint and less toxic toxicity and environmental damage in the manufacturing process of 
uh, batteries and for the cathode and the anode. Let me say that again. This is a much simpler, much less expensive, smaller footprint and less toxicity and environmental damage in the manufacturing process for batteries. And just like a simpler, easier way to do battery manufacturing. So this is the first part of the breakthrough. The second part of the breakthrough is not having that solvent in there actually greatly improves the performance of those battery cells. And uh, I per previous in my last video was, uh, and this is the error that Jack Rickard corrected me on is I was like, oh my God, it's this transformational breakthrough. It's not, the, the, the breakthrough is really the cost side, but there's a lot of incremental improvements that are helping the battery, which he says, Jack Rickards say, are pretty significant incremental improvements, but not a step change. And so what we're looking at there is because there's no solvent, it extends the life, how many times you can recharge that battery. Um, so you get a battery that maybe, you know, now Tesla's batteries have like an eight year warranty, I think. Imagine if you double that to 16 years. I mean, I'm just throwing these out there so you can see um, what this would mean. Additionally, they, the energy density of the cell improved. Um, they have demonstrated um, at scale with a partner, apparently, 300 100 watt hours per kilogram, which according to my research, Tesla is currently at uh, about 250 watt hours per kilogram industry leading. And so this is even better than Tesla's current um, energy density. And they have also patented a path to get to 500 watt hours per kilogram. So potentially, you know, material, meaningful, incremental improvements in the energy density of the cell. We have its extended battery life. Um, we have this re reduction in cost. And then this other layer of this environmentally friendly, like cobalt, using these toxic solvents, um, these are things that, you know, a lot of EV sort of skeptics and, and haters are constantly, you know, harping on. So Tesla could, could remove cobalt and remove this toxic solvent from the manufacturing process, which also makes it more sustainable. So anyway, tying this all together on that long rant, the dry battery electro technology is this simple breakthrough where they don't have to build, have this big oven and dry these battery cells with this solvent. That means it's faster, they have, need a smaller footprint, and it's cheaper to manufacture batteries. Cheaper to manufacture batteries. Those manufactured batteries, because they're simpler to produce, are actually have slightly better performance attributes as well, and they're more environmentally sustainable. This is just a, battery, a better battery manufacturing technology, probably the best in the world. And the second it was validated, Elon Musk signed the check and bought the company and think about it they did a 218 million dollar all stock deal maxwell still had 60 million in cash just to throw a quick number out there you know 200 dollars per battery pack the lowest they said it would save times 380,000 cars a year which is how many cars tesla is planning to build in 2019 per their guidance is a 76 million dollars worth of savings so you know that already starts to get into the ballpark of justifying the entire purchase price of maxwell technologies but i think there's another sort of angle to this beyond the dry battery electrode piece which is kind of unrelated or it's related but separate in why Tesla would want it, um, which is ultra capacitors. So ultra capacitors are a different technology than batteries to store and deliver energy. It sounds like, per my understanding, they're, they're sort of niche. They're this technology that in science fiction gets a lot of love as a potential breakthrough, but actually commercializing it, you know, at a cost and scale and footprint that's economical for a consumer product has been difficult. But at the same time, if you look at what has going on, been on, on behind the scenes of Maxwell's business, it seems like the commercialization of their ultra ultra capacitor business into EVs has been taking off simultaneously as they've been validating their dry battery electro technology. So Geely, which is the parent company of Volvo, just uh, bought or did it sign a contract to buy 100 million worth of ultra capacitors from Maxwell for their next generation EV platform. And a, a, a bunch of you have commented on my video and Sean's video saying that you believe the rapid acceleration um, uh, of the Roadster is actually leveraging and the potential to set the specs of the semi truck are potentially leveraging some sort of ultra capacitor technology. So maybe Tesla had already be, been a customer of Maxwell's ultra capacitors um, before this deal was announced. And when they saw the dry battery electro technology as well, they were like, we just want to own this whole thing. And so, um, and the other, you know, wrench to th throw in this, which is I, I mentioned my other video as well as Elon Musk uh, d went to Stanford and was planning to do a PhD on next generation ultra capacitors for electric vehicles, literally cracking the problem of how to commercialize them and make them, you know, efficient enough to, to be commercially feasible. And and he dropped out two days later or uh, very shortly after to go start Zip2 and then PayPal and become the entrepreneur. But even he had this, this concept and this quote when he's describing what he would do as PhD, he says, uh, capacitors are the future of EVs. And he would he was kind of scheming on leveraging advanced equipment for chip making and photonics to make this breakthrough in ultra capacitors and uh, create a new energy storage system to replace lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles. He had actually already been working at an advanced um, capacitor company company basically said some sort of solid state solution would be the basic idea. And so I, you can parse that up 
however you want. It's a little bit over my head, but I thought it's interesting if we go into Maxwell's dry battery electrode slide that I keep showing, it says one of the future, you know, things this will enable is solid state batteries. Um, and this, remember, this technology was based on a breakthrough or some sort of relation to the ultra capacitor IP. And so long story short is I don't have all the answers. I'm just trying to do my best to speculate and put the pieces together. But I think that the, you know, fundamentally Tesla is going to significantly reduce their battery manufacturing costs with this dry battery electrode technology. That is huge. Additionally, it will incrementally improve the performance of those batteries that they are producing with that production process. This means we could see faster charging, slightly increased range um, for Tesla's vehicles. Nothing crazy like I mentioned in my last video where I said the 900 mile Model 3, that was way off. It's more like a 15 to 50% improvement in range according to Sean Mitchell and that's sort of what I'm calculating. So that's one exciting thing. But the other exciting thing is what comes after the lithium ion battery? What is the next iteration that's just game-changingly more efficient, something that could enable potentially an electric VTOL jet because it was such a leap in battery technology. I believe that would be a super advanced ultra capacitor, which is also what Maxwell Technology is working on. So is Tesla planning for things like V3 rapid supercharging for, you know, these next generation products like the Roadster and the semi truck? You know, why are they so hesitant to comment on the future battery pack architecture for the Tesla Model S and X? Why do they just drop the 75 kilowatt hour pack and not and say they're not switching the 2170 cells? Like something just doesn't add up. You know, we haven't had this last puzzle piece drop for Tesla's technology for their, their future products. And then another theory I have is like, I think they're getting ready for not a 2170 switch from the Model S and X. I'm wrong on that. I'll take the L. I think they're setting up to, to sort of revamp their entire product lineup to be hybrids. And this is sort of a moonshot, so I could be way wrong. But I think beyond just the dry battery electro technology, Tesla will work on a hybrid ultra capacitor lithium ion car because batteries and ultra capacitors are good at delivering and storing power in very different ways. You know, the ultra capacitor can't store a lot of power very long, but can deliver it in super rapid bursts. And that is something you need for really good acceleration for, you know, regenerative braking for rapid charging. But then you'd still want that big battery pack, you know, to go long distances and just for, for the more normalized things that the EVs are doing now. So the, the, the bottom line is I think Tesla's next generation platform technology isn't just a lithium ion battery in the trunk. It's potentially a hybrid ultra capacitor lithium ion battery, and you get the best performance characteristics of both. And we may have already seen a demo of that in the Roadster. So that is my crazy ultra capacitor hybrid theory. Um, this is my wrap up on Maxwell Technologies. I'm trying to do my best to learn. So there could be tons of errors and facts and uh, tons of errors in this video, but I'm doing my best. Huge shout out to Sean Mitchell, Jack Rickard. Watch their videos if you want to learn more. I also just want to make a last note on this is like the stock Tesla stock is up like 2% today because some analysts put out a new price target. You know, everyone seems to have forgotten this acquisition. The mainstream media is not talking about it. I think this is one of my favorite examples of why like it gets me so excited to be an investor today researching these breakthrough technologies because it really is like the hustle is your hustle is the limit to what you will find out and your potential to generate alpha on your investment portfolio. Like there is an, so much information out, out there about dry battery electrodes, about ultra capacitors, about Maxwell Technologies about this acquisition that Tesla just spent hundreds of millions of dollars to do that is going to be the backbone of their battery technology for years to come, potentially. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody's researching it. Sean Mitchell's video had less than 10,000 views when I made as I'm making this. J Jack Rickard's video has less than 10,000 views as I'm making this, and they have unbelievable analysis of the acquisition. I think nobody's paying attention. Nobody on Wall Street is gets this and, and, and realizes how huge of an impact and deal this could have, because Tesla's already the leader in cost in producing batteries and that is their biggest moat and competitive advantage and they were years ahead in that and now they've acquired the, a huge game-changing technology in terms of battery manufacturing to only get further ahead in their key core competency which is the moat that extends throughout all of their facets of their business if you're building electric pl trucks planes boats cars scooters it doesn't matter drones if, if you have the best and cheapest batteries you are going to win and tesla just acquired a piece of technology that could significantly reduce their battery costs and so um while also increasing incremental performance and so there is and the market doesn't care and they're not paying attention and no analyst is 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 hy hyping up how important this is so anyway that's just my little two cent antidote of like how you the guy behind your lap the computer right now watching it can just start doing research on this breakthrough technology that's worth hundreds of millions of tesla that nobody is thinking about or not enough people are anyway i just think that's awesome and exciting and like it motivates me it's like the wild west i'm just like i just want to go out there and learn as much as i can uh because i think there's so much amazing information out there that is just right beyond our fingertips 
tips about this technology that we haven't discovered yet and it's just waiting to be found on the internet anyway so that's what it is um this is hyperchange to give you a two second summary of what we're looking at why tesla bought maxwell technologies for 218 millions they're going to be making better batteries for cheaper with dry battery electrode pat breakthrough that is the main reason and will justify the whole acquisition the second reason is that tesla is going to start transitioning their vehicle lineup to hybrids of ultra capacitors and lithium ion batteries and the leading ultra or super capacitor company um, is Maxwell Technologies. So there's two key pieces of sort of tech that Tesla wanted. That's why they bought Maxwell. That's my best understanding of this deal at this moment. Of course, I'm going to update you on hyperchange if things change. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please let me know. This is like why I do hyperchange is to get your comments and your feedback. I would, there's no way I would know this much about Maxwell or have as good of an understanding of this if I didn't have you all commenting so thank you so much um huge shout out to our patreon supporters producers fun in the channel um i'll see you guys next time peace